August 26, 2023. The drug addict, the sex addict handyman, and the career bank robber. If I die, Jeff did it. I used to say this to my kids after a violent encounter with my husband, Jeff. I would make sure I let them know that he was not to be trusted if I ended up dead. My adult daughter, who was living with Jeff and I at the same time, was so afraid of him that she moved out and refused to even give me her address. When we found drugs in our apartment that we knew weren't ours, appearing to be either heroin, meth, or fentanyl, we suspected Jeff had hid them for later use. And then our cats ended up dead. We knew he was more unstable than we had ever known. When I found a spoon in his truck that looked like he may have been using street drugs again, I was worried. Jeff denies any drug use, of course, but he does admit to being a former crack cocaine addict, which required treatment. Yet I stayed in this relationship and married him anyway. My recent stent in rehab has me recalling the day I found out that I was pregnant in 2015. I recall saying, what the fuck? I'm pregnant at 41? Okay, I can't say I didn't plan it. I have, in fact, planned all six of my children, one way or the other. I often wonder if having babies is an addictive behavior for me because I have chosen horribly wrong times in my life to plan pregnancies, but my children have been the greatest source of joy in my life. When you have an addiction, you are obviously gaining some benefit out of the use of a substance, behavior, or activity. As a child, I had no idea my mother was a crack addict or an alcoholic because in my environment growing up, everyone around me partook in those substances, so I thought it was normal. But I did know that my dad was a career bank robber, and the only reason I know that society deemed his behavior as wrong was because he was arrested and sent off to prison. I believe that our experiences with our parents do help shape us, and their abusive or addictive behaviors become normalized in our mind, and so we may repeat the pattern years later, quite unaware of the damage those behaviors will wreck onto our lives and the lives of others, especially those we love. We should not continue to blame our parents for their mistakes in our adulthood for the bad choices that we make. However, our parents should acknowledge how we as children experience their harmful actions and or neglectful inactions if they are able. This can be an incredibly healing experience. In my case, my mother was incapable of this, but I forgave her because I understood the limitations of what she could and could not acknowledge for the things she had done to me due to her own experiences of childhood trauma. What I want to do when I see my daughter Izzy is just that. I want to give her everything my mother couldn't, wouldn't, or refused to do. I did this each time I went on the Dr. Phil show to see my son. I tried to acknowledge his pain. I told him that I was sorry, but what I learned in rehab is that oftentimes it is too late to say you were sorry to your family members for the horrific things you have done when you were using substances to the detriment of others. In the end, I am not sure that my son ever appreciated my acknowledgement of his pain and or my acknowledgement of my failure to protect him from his stepfather during my own state of depression all of which deeply impacted his life. But at least as a mother, I can say I told him, I love you. Yes, basically, I sucked. And would you please, please forgive me? My actions to date, even though he passed away in 2020, is to be the best mother I can be today. And in this way, I honor his life. My dad got out of prison for being a career bank robber, came home for a year, and then robbed another bank. His I'm sorry didn't matter to me because he had let me down countless times. I still love him, but I don't want to hear I'm sorry. I wanted to see love in his actions. But alas, he was incapable of stopping his addictive behaviors of robbing banks. Love is action, not words, and I cannot say that enough. Someone once told me that you can tell a lot about a man from the way that he treats his mother. My mom's a bitch, and I hope she dies, Jeff said to me when we first met. This was my first clue that my current husband might not be as good as a person as I thought he was. Oh, he tried to say that all of his other siblings felt the same way, and he went out of his way to prove it to me. But as his mother is disabled and needing assistance and help just to get out of her wheelchair, he refused to help her 
or even have her move in with him, even though he has a four-bedroom house with extra rooms. I personally think Jeff hates women, and this is why he abuses them to the point of physical pain that he enjoys inflicting upon them. I asked him why he wanted his mother to die and hated her so much, thinking that I could find some childhood trauma in his past that caused him to feel this way, and he would just continue to say she's a bitch. And she wouldn't give him part of his father's life insurance after his father passed away. Thus, the reason seemed to be all about money. I tried to explain to him that his mom needed his help. And maybe she was overreacting. And what did she do to you? And he continued to tell me she did nothing. But she's a bitch and I hope she dies. My second clue about Jeff was that he pointed out how much I drank. Yet he completely ignored the fact that he's a raging alcoholic and a drug addict. He's destroyed two of my apartments by punching holes in the walls and shattering a glass door worth at least a thousand or more dollars during his angry rages and nearly broke down my front door trying to get in the apartment during an argument. I should have left him then, but I didn't. Note to self. Work on codependency issues? Okay, so my third clue was, yes, he killed my cats. And finally, he hit me on more than one occasion. So when I left rehab and Jeff started talking to me again and asking me to once again send him sex videos of myself, I thought, what are you doing? He wanted me to retract things that I posted about him on Facebook, but in good conscience, I just could not because everything I said about him is true. Somehow, I had become wrapped up in this relationship that isn't love, but it's the same thing as vodka for me. It's an addiction, just like Jeff's sex addiction of needing to have sex with random strangers, male and females, and forcing his partners to go to sex clubs with him. I need to steer away from him. It's not healthy. Every morning I wake up and say, Jeff is vodka, and I abstain. You need to move on from people, things, and even places that no longer serve you or your life's purpose in a healthy way. I know, it can be hard to do, that is. Walk away from everything you've ever known or walk away from someone you believe you truly love. But it is definitely necessary for your spiritual growth and overall sense of joy and happiness. I didn't walk away from my mother, but I did love her from afar. And I was also supportive of her in any way I could be without injuring my own emotions and health. I didn't walk away from my father, but I am doing the same. Loving him from afar in a supportive way in a healthy relationship that serves us both. But I am walking away totally and completely from Jeff. Because when you're in an abusive relationship with a cruel person who behind closed doors is an admitted sadist and only wants to hurt people when other people are not watching, that's a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde you should avoid being in an intimate relationship with. Hell, I wouldn't even want to be friends with that type of person. That is when I am sober. Now that I am sober and my eyes are open, I realize that I made horrible decisions when I was an active alcoholic. That included relationship choices. Addiction can look like many things, not just alcohol or drugs, but behaviors. Mine may have been having multiple pregnancies, making bad relationship choices, and alcohol. Yours could be as simple as too much Amazon shopping. Yes, that's a thing. But today I am not ashamed to say that I am at, I am in active recovery for my addiction and codependency issues. And you shouldn't be ashamed either. <laughs>